Season two of Brave really started, I would think, around 2014, um, and it went through 2016, so I'll never forget being at, it was actually at a Kingdom Songs event, which Michael Farron was doing, and Dustin Smith came to speak that night, and he said, women's ministries are being birthed in this place tonight, and I felt the Lord convict me and say, basically, um, you need to be doing this girls right out thing consistently that was in 2014 and I really think that kind of launched the next season for us which was season two yeah so the pillar for season two was Lonnie Crump she really had a heart and a vision for transforming the music industry she ran alongside me she helped establish our first leadership team she had a great way <laughs> of keeping things moving with all of our creatives and um, for those that remember during that season, uh, it was hilarious how she would guide us, but she was super uh, intentional about scheduling and um, spreadsheets, which I so needed in my life and we needed as a ministry um, to really just start that foundation of getting things organized. And that was really her, a big part of that was her. Uh, our family had been attending, had just started attending Gateway Church at that time in 2014 and um, because of that we were allowed to use that space so we were so gracious to be able to meet there for that period of time and um, and then after a little bit we moved to integrity music so integrity started renting out their current facility which is in cool springs and um, it was pretty empty when they first got in there and we had lots of room um, which gave us the capacity to grow to the point where I think we'd have between 35 and 70 in person. We learned a lot about leadership during this season, about delegating, about um, really how to operate as a team. Um, we learned a lot about fun. We had some crazy times. Uh, you'll see probably some pictures of our pajama party, our onesie Christmas party. That was um, <laughs> a legendary night we still talk about. Uh, I think it was during this season we were exploring all kinds of crazy ways to have fun. I think uh, goat yoga was on our list during this season, <laughs> um, but we never did it. And I think this is when we also had some Enneagram 7s enter the picture, which makes total sense now, uh, including people like Dina Porterfield and Emily Weeks. Um, but yeah, we learned how to have a great time together. We grew in depth in our relationships with one another. This season was really foundational in laying um, just prayer underneath everything that we did. And uh, also just, we saw, you know, some amazing, beautiful things happen um, through those times of prayer and worship. Our worship got deeper during this time. So we spent hours um, in those places that I mentioned before, literally just worshiping and, um, and just grew in worship. Our hearts during this period of time were also stirred for international connections. We had our friends Jill and Andrew come and visit, um, I think around this period of time or maybe a little before, but we were just starting to get stirred for really the UK. Our hearts started shifting and moving that way. I think personally, I grew in my communication skills also during this period of time. So where I was able to listen um, for what God wanted to say to me um, and even to us in the past, this was the season that I really um, was able to learn more about communicating that and verbalizing that and what that meant. So our main events during this period of time were our regular monthly meetings. And that became consistent and that was always our anchor. We started adding in a few things here or there. So we tried a writer's round. Um, we tried some writer's rounds. We tried doing some dinners out as a community. So we would gather and, and do that together. Um, Whole Foods, McCreary's Pub were a couple of places I remember doing some of those, but there were more. We also did several Kingdom Song lunches. So we would host basically the women's event for what was happening at Kingdom Songs. This season of Brave was helpful in two ways, I believe organizationally um, and leadership wise, and also just depth for our in our relationships with one another and with the Lord. And um, I really think that that 
that piece, both of those pieces, so the organizational and the heart piece, and you've heard me say that before, right? Skills in the heart grew at the same time um, and continued to grow and are still a part of what we're doing today. Through the course of that 10 years, um, I really basically identified four people that have really stood beside me and helped carry the torch. Mm -hmm. um, and one of those people is you. Mm -hmm. And so first of all, I just want to say thank you. Oh, um, thank you. And I remember you chirping in my ear many times. I just don't want you to quit. <laughs> yeah. You know what? There were a lot of times that I wanted to. So um i'm super thankful that the lord gave me that friendship and just that camaraderie in you um in that season which we're calling season two so <laughs> love it yes so season two so i just i i just wanted to hear from your heart lonnie just maybe some of your favorite memories um of those days and also well yeah favorite memories first let's start with that okay so i think in in season two episode one <laughs> i think it re re uh started at integrity right we were meeting yeah. kind of in the evenings there and in their building. And I, I remember for me being terrified to go the first time because you had made like a Facebook post um, and we had just kind of become friends on Facebook and you had made a Facebook post saying you were gonna relaunch this. Yeah. These writers nights and anyone who wanted to come and join should message you for the link and the details and I remember being like I want to be a part of that but I'm I don't even know if I'm really a songwriter and so I think hands down my favorite memory would be the first one you relaunched I got the details from you I met I was brave enough to message you for details showed up and you had done like a songwriting challenge for us like we were all kind of like supposed to you gave us like a starting line and then we were supposed to write a next line um and it was just a writing exercise mm -hmm. and i don't know there's probably like 20 i don't i don't know how many girls showed up but it was like a decent amount of people and um i remember just feeling like i wasn't really sure if i belonged there was qualified to be there but uh, you, you shared from your heart. And then I think towards the end of the night, you were like, oh yeah, let's like look over this writing exercise. And, um, you kind of went down through the list and you, no one had a name beside it, but you know, you, you picked the winner that night and it happened to be mine. And I just, felt like that was such a like smile from God like you do belong here and you are a songwriter but just I don't know that will probably always be my favorite because it like established for me like the purpose of that community and what's really funny if I fast forward you know through the seasons maybe <laughs> Mm -hmm. is that the reason why you picked mine as the winner that day is because you said it had the right amount of syllables and it wasn't really because it was that good of a lyric <laughs> but you're like well this is the one that has the right amount of syllables and then later in the season I find out that I'm a structure writer and I'm like of course that even that was being affirmed even back then so uh the writing exercise th that first meeting is probably one of my favorites um but I remember from that also from the same season that you would plan themes every <laughs> every <laughs> meeting yes I did and they were really incredible themes like way over the top like one time was a full course catered dinner <laughs> one was like a tea party like like we walk into a garden one what was the one where things were hanging from the do you remember it was like there were some pieces of 
poetry or lyrics were hanging from the wall and we did like a walkthrough. I don't know, you had these amazing themes. And um, I re- I guess one of my favorite memories is trying to talk you out of <laughs> continuing. Every time, every time after we did one, remember we'd say so late cleaning up because I had all this stuff, like my car was full of stuff. And I come home late and unload all the stuff from that night. But and you're right. It was excessive. They were, they were incredible themes though. And they were probably so uh, meaningful, you know, to, well, to everyone really. And so beautiful, but I, I can see like, even in that, like you were just building and creating a community, a creative community, um, even through all of that. But um, I think, I think that might be one of my favorites is like, oh, we love these themes. Stop doing them. You can't keep doing them. <laughs> but really the Just real motivation, <laughs> the real motivation behind trying to talk you out of them was more because I wanted you to keep doing the main thing and not yeah. give up, you know, because it, it, it was so much you were doing so much. <laughs> and we didn't want Eric to tell us you were no longer allowed <laughs> to. <laughs> Uh, use your personal <laughs> funds to create these magical moments <laughs> <laughs> right because I was right <laughs> yeah so yeah that was I don't know that and then um I guess is season one also including the first brave worship conference yes <laughs> well season two you mean okay yeah, oh, yeah season two sorry. it kind of smears into season three just a little but yeah my third highlight, my favorite memory would probably be being in your minivan with Mary Beth and sweet baby Tatum at that yeah. point, planning out the first Brave Worship Conference, like two wow. weeks out, trying to make sure we thought of everything and really terrified because not many people had signed up yet. Yes. And just knowing that we were supposed to do it, but not really sure how to pull it all off and um getting through that weekend and so many people showed up and it was just super powerful and I think that's when we knew like oh we're we're crazy but we're the right kind of crazy (laughs) (laughs) I think you saw that Lonnie so many times that whole what that dynamic you just said where we knew we were called to do something, but we had we didn't know how we were supposed to get there necessarily all the time. But sometimes mm-hmm. we just showed up, like even sometimes spontaneously in the moment, right? Yes. And yes. um, I just remember you saying, "Well, God always shows up. Shows up. I don't know how it happens." <laughs> um, and I felt that same way, you know, like He was leading us sort of a step at a time. Hmm but it didn't always make logical sense. Yeah, I think I like really learned quickly to trust if you were hearing something, not to like logic away why that could or couldn't work um, to in that time when we're really, it was not even uh, named yet. And it was kind of just developing and just seeing like time and time again, what you just said, like how things had just, come together in such a unique way. And I think that's where you like really shine. It goes back to those, what I said were magical moments, but I mean that in a holy way. Um, (laughs) uh, Just, you know, there were elements that um, really come, I think from the creativity that you have in your heart to help people encounter God and to connect with each other and their creativity it's really cool so well I have to say one of my favorite moments with you um was when we were doing a women's lunch you remember that one I know what you're gonna say I still have the picture actually I might put it in here um yeah because you carried a whole tray of tiramisu a ginormous one remember Um, I was like really trying to offer it to people you're like see everybody we have a whole tiramisu and then you remember what happened 
I do. <laughs> yeah. You, you tripped or something and mm -hmm. it went all down somebody's leg, right? It really did. <laughs> I don't know if I've laughed that hard in a long time. That was hilarious. I still feel really bad about you that. You do? I you do. Have... Well, I feel, oh, I mean, not for the um, embarrassment sake, because I, right. I can do that to myself often, but for spilling tiramisu on a person, yeah, I feel <laughs> so bad about that. <laughs> oh, man, that was so funny. Oh, gosh. Well, um, then another thing that I loved experiencing with you was Scotland. And, um, I'll never forget like all of us just how hard it was getting that to work like that trip just felt like a battle mm -hmm. um but even having to go to the doctor with you on that trip but just so many beautiful experiences that we had together and how the Lord really used that to bond us together as a community but um so in general though what do you think as far as um things we were learning during that season two um which ones of those do you think were important as a foundation for us as a community what i um, and you might have already named some of them but is there anything else that comes to mind well i think foremost it was just to create a place for community yeah. and to i think i think like the thing that just always really inspired me and made me want, want to continue everything that you were seeing to do is just the way that you always would say, like, your voice matters, you know, to everyone. Um, the way you were like inviting people to be part of following what God put in their heart. And I think also at the same time, like, acknowledging that everyone's in a different place with what that looks like and no matter what your season is if you're a mom who really can't go and do car rights all day long or if you're you know a working person trying to squeeze it in like uh, with your church or whatever however that looks um just how cool that was um as a foundation is that you were wanting to see other people use their voice and so i think that is a big part of what created um, such a safe place in that community was just that there's so many people who felt like me walking in that first day, like, I don't even know if I really belong here, but I want to belong here. <laughs> I just mm -hmm. have nothing to prove or show for it yet. Uh, and that didn't matter. It was more of just, um, you have to do what God's put in your heart to do. And like that is such a needed message still you know for each of us every day really <laughs> um so that was that was definitely i think one of the foundations um and there you know there's several that sort of developed out of that like making room at the table um you know for everybody and i think i think that's just been the beautiful part of the community in in the earlier days there was you know maybe a lot of professional songwriters mixed in with like someone who'd never really written a song before but it was just all about what was in our heart to do and so it was really beautiful how that continues to to be like an encouragement and a community based off of that mm. so awesome yeah and it's crazy how like what you're saying regarding just knowing what God's called you to do and yet having nothing to nothing to prove um or nothing to show for what's mm -hmm. in your heart yet and yet calling people forward into that destiny or into that calling um and that's exactly what we were doing as a community at the same time you know yeah. we don't we couldn't always see um what the next step was but we knew the one right in front of us you know or we knew what he was calling us to do, but we didn't know how to accomplish that yet. Um, so in, in some crazy way that large, the group at large was also experiencing the same thing that those new songwriters were at the same time. Yeah. 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 What, what characteristics do you think developed during that time that became a foundation um, for us as a community? Oh yeah. Or anything else? Yeah. I think, 
one of the things that you saw early on was also a need to organize people and empower them to be part of the community and of the leadership. And that's really cool because, um, you know, a lot of times people have to kind of vie for a place or a position. And I feel like it was always the way it should be in kingdom things, like just through service <laughs> and having a, a heart willing to just continue what was the mission, which was always um, not to be competitive, but to be truly a community that's cheering each other on. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it was just neat that it kind of came together so naturally, but um, at every level, your heart was always to include more people and to empower more people to continue to be part of the community and to lead through the community. So I think it was just, even in those early days, I can look back and um, see we're standing up huddled in a little prayer circle, dividing out who would say a prayer when, and um, to make sure we had someone greeting at the front door so that people felt welcome. I mean, the, it was like an intentional structured community, even though maybe we didn't even know that we were doing that at the time. Mm. Um, I think that really stands out as a foundation too, is that your heart was always to help people um, have a place to connect and to serve. Mm. Well, and I think you are part of laying the foundation of that structure side of things. I know that's your songwriting <laughs> gift, but it's your regular life gift too. <laughs> yes. So, um, you know, that was, I think, I think that was part of the foundation too, Lonnie, is all that you poured in from an organizational standpoint and just helping us to see what the tasks were that we needed people for and maybe the ones we didn't anymore or whatever made sense. And there was a lot of change, you know, through that season, a lot of growth, but, um, but you always did our announcements, <laughs> but in a, a hilarious way, always <laughs> a little tongue in cheek involved. Um, you did our announcements, but you also, as far as our, you know, live gatherings just sort of kept everything on track and, um, yeah, I was really needed, especially among many creatives. <laughs> yes I was gonna say one of my favorite memories from that time also was <laughs> when Mary Beth and I developed the strategy of how to exit the buildings <laughs> we learned that we just needed to turn the lights off um slowly <laughs> as we were cleaning up we just turn a light off and yeah. eventually all of the creative conversation would find its way to the parking lot eventually <laughs> Yeah, we had some late nights, didn't we, Lonnie? Really late nights. I think one night we didn't leave till after one one o'clock in the morning. Do you remember that? I do remember a lot of wrap up conversation sitting in the van. Yes. <laughs> yes. Being exhausted and knowing that we needed to get home. <laughs> right. Yeah, those were some good moments though, and needed conversations and um, just treasured times. Now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you again, Lonnie, so much for all that you poured in, um, all you have poured in through the years, but, um, you know, I can't ever, we could never see what God was going to do, you know, in the future and how, what you poured in um, made such an impact in such an incredible way. So, um, I'm super thankful to have you part of our community still, even though you're moving. Um, yes, like you said, we still have FaceTime and co-writing via Zoom or however that's going to happen. So, um, yeah, super thankful for you. Thank you. It's really, it's been such a blessing to my life to be a part of it and such an affirmation of the things God placed in my heart. And I really... I don't know if I would have made so much progress in my personal um, obedience and journey if it hadn't been for all of the things that you and Brave have done. And I will say one more thing is that uh, we are moving and I was in my basement the other day uh, sorting through just boxes of things, uh, old things. And 
the thing that stood out to me and I thought about you so much was that I just found like piles of letters and um, cards of encouragement from friends and mentors. And it was this really holy moment standing in my basement, realizing like, I think I'm just living my life, but like I've been here because so many people have invested in my life and I've had so many good mentors and friends starting from a young age, specifically in music. Um, but you have been that for me so much in these past, you know, as, as long as I've been joined in um, these past few years. And I could never literally say thank you enough for just mentoring and investing. And I, I love that you offer that to everybody. Mm. So thank you. Aww. <laughs> I know. Well, um, but I really do mean that. Thank you. I I like literally was like tearing up in my basement, going like, "Oh my gosh!" Like I've had just a series of people encouraging my whole life. Mm -hmm. Like, and how do you get that lucky? <laughs> like, mm -hmm. or I guess also just to realize like just to be grateful for that and to want to be that, you know? Yeah. Mm. So good job. Thank you. <laughs> oh, well, I appreciate that. And I enjoyed every minute of it from the time I met you, which was, I'll never forget. You were in the church uh, over at Gateway and it was during a kingdom songs, right? And um, mm -hmm. I just felt led to pray for you that day. And from that day forward, I just felt like the Lord ha highlighted you in my heart as, you know, somebody that I needed to make sure, um, you know, I was encouraging and connecting with. And um, I'm still waiting for your book to come out. So that yeah. was part of that prayer that day. Um, so as you're moving to Texas, make room for your writing. Yes. Time. I my husband always says the reason why I can't release the book yet is because the end part, we haven't lived it yet. And yeah. I thought my goal for 2020 was literally to write more songs and to finish that book. And now I'm like, are my songs in that book ever going to come out? But I, I have to believe that he's, he's right. And that it's all part of the story. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> it's part of the story and it's part of our story, you know, mm -hmm. as brave. So that's right. It's beautiful.